Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. I apologize. Uh, We're a little bit late coming on the show today. So if you're wondering what was taking so long, well, we had some technical challenges. And sometimes that happens here, even Living Heaven on Earth. We get technical challenges. And so I have Tom here, Tom Lombrazo, because we have an incredible show for you today. We're going to be talking about what is our life about, and Tom is helping us seeing the world through the eyes of an angel, and that is such a perfect uh, topic. He is on with us on the first Friday of every month, and we have an incredible show for you today. So in about five minutes, we're going to take a break, and we're going to try to see if we can get Tom back, because I was on Skype earlier with Tom. He's he's on the phone right now, and he, he's got some incredible paintings, uh, images in the back of his um, where he's sitting. And so we, we, we couldn't wait to show you today. So uh, let's keep your fingers crossed that this is all going to work out great. And then we'll just go from there. So uh, first, before I get started, I want to talk about last week, I did a show and the show was dedicated to the students at the uh, Parkland, Florida high school that recently um, started a march called March for Our Lives. And I donated and dedicated that show to them. And I talked about how a lot of us, how people act on their emotions. And then I um, talked about how how we can really bring our consciousness to uh, our awareness to learning about the power of emotions and, you know, and, and all of the different aspects of how when someone acts on their emotions, how that could possibly play out in with bullying, with domestic violence, in suicide, or even mass shootings. And so I, I, I shared a lot of that. So if you haven't seen or listened to that show, please go to CorneliaStephanie.com and look under the archives, and it's right there. It's under the radio tab. And so... Um, that was an incredible show. And, you know, our our thoughts and our uh, prayers are with the families. And also go to the March for Our Lives website. These kids are marching, uh, organizing a march on March 24th of this month. And so we want to send all our love and we want to send all our support to these kids that are demanding change. Not one more life left behind, not one more life lost, not on their watch. So that's all part of this whole process. And so I now I want to see if we can uh, bring Tom on. Uh, Tom, are you there? I am here and uh, so pleased to be on your show again, Cornelia. Oh, Tom, it's such a pleasure to have you on. I so value and appreciate the gifts that you share with us. And I want to be able to tell the listeners right off the bat where they can go because you, you're you showing us how to see the world through the eyes of an angel. And you're reminding us constantly how we're all angels. We just need to recognize that fact. And you've got some amazing um, things that you're going to be sharing with us. And you have been. So how is it that people can get in contact with your website and how they can listen to some of the past shows that you and I have done together and how this whole journey started for you? Would you please let our audience know? Yes. Um, her website is www.whenangelstouch.com. Whenangelstouch.com. You can email me at Tom at when angels touch, touch.com. Um, also Facebook, When Angels Touch 
Facebook. That's how you can reach me. And um, I, I usually respond very quickly. So um, also, by the way, um, our new book, uh, The Magic of Finding Love and Peace, we just finished that late last year. Uh, that's on the front page, home page of the website. So you can look at it. You can order it. It is now $25. And, it's $25, uh, and that, that includes shipping and handling. Is that right, Tom? That's, that is right. Yeah, and I just want to, while I, while we have... While I have you on, I want to be able to tell the listeners, we just received a testimonial from somebody, and I just want to read that because I thought, you know, this is just so awesome uh, with someone that just recently received your book. And what is it that people are saying about your incredible book, which the book is practically 300 pages, and it it, it captures your spiritual journey and the way that you see the world through um, the eyes of an angel and the, the magical experiences that you've had with the archangel, Archangel Michael, and uh, some of the other angels in your life. But here is uh, what a testimony um, we just received from someone that, that, that got your book. And uh, she writes and she said, Dad called me today to tell me how much he enjoyed reading your book. He said that if you were not a believer before, that you will be now after reading this book. It allowed me to reference some of my own experiences in my own life that he knew about and the way that the clouds let me do my work. And it helped him connect the dots. And dad wanted, he loves giving people books that inspire him. So he wanted to order three books, three of your books to pass it forward to other people that will benefit from this incredible work. So I just, I mean, this is just one of the recent uh, testimonials that came in. And people are just flocking, flocking, flocking to your um, Facebook page when angelstouch.com because everybody is is wanting to feel that connection with the angels because we know that we're not alone we know that we have angelic helpers and we have our team and that's why i find this so valuable to have you on tom for the next six months and then who knows maybe even longer where you're helping us really capture uh, seeing the world through the eyes of an angel the way that that you do. So let's let's go to break and I want to be able to see if we can bring you on to Skype. We've got Justin in the background from Transformation Talk Radio and these guys are so great. They are just awesome. So thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. In the meantime, if you can go to whenangelstouch.com website, you're going to see uh, Tom's uh, past radio shows there and he has his book there and you're going to be able to see those and in the meantime we're going to see if we can bring Tom back live on Facebook so thank you so much and we'll be right back okay Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Living Heaven on Earth. I'm with my co-host, Tom Lombrazo, and we've got Tom live. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Oh, it's so nice to get out of this uh, wherever I was, and now I'm here. <laughs> now you're here. And and look look at the – I, I hope that the listeners can see the beautiful background um, that you have behind you. And so do you want to just tell us what um, is on your left and what is on your right? And for those people that are not able to see it, they can um, later on go to um, your website and they can watch the show once it's uploaded into your, into your widget. But please tell us what's on the left and what's on the right of you. Well, um, I want to first say, uh, one of the things I say uh, to a lot of people is about this whole spiritual existence is when you open your heart, you get to see. And uh, we'll explain that later, but this is an example of getting to see. <laughs> um, to my left is um, what I call the Hawaiian God cloud. It happened because my psychic, who was really good, told me, 
that when I go to Hawaii to the big island, go to where the lava hits the ocean and all the steam comes up and it's a, what you see is an amorphous um, steam cloud, big one. And I watched and watched and she said, watch, there's, they are saying it will turn into like a tornado. And all of a sudden I'm watching it and the, that cloud turned into a spiral. It was just moving around and around. And I was taking pictures of it and all of a sudden, boom, this guy comes out. It was huge. You can see it with the hooked nose, the face, the big belly, the shoulder. Absolutely. I call it the Hawaiian God. It's an incredible image. So clouds are not necessarily in the sky. <laughs> they can be right on top of the ocean. Uh, that's a beautiful one. One day, the one on the right, I call the goddess heels. Um, I've learned that sometimes when you look close to the sun, there are images in the clouds. And uh, this one was right on the edge of the, um, the sun. And I have to tell you, I was so surprised to see it. But I was watching it. And I took a lot of pictures. And when I developed them up through the computer, look what you see. It's this very female-looking uh, entity. And she's got her hand over a smaller being. And that's why I say it's the goddess heels. Mm -hmm. Remarkable image um, to, to get. Point being, there are things all around us that we kind of don't see unless we really look. And um, I think these are indications of to uh, kind of keep the faith and open your heart. Think about that. There are things that you don't understand necessarily, but they're there for us to contemplate, meditate, um, to understand that we are not alone in this world. Yes. Yes. And thank you so much, Tom. And so these pictures that, that, that are behind you, you took them with your camera, with yes. your, you yes. took them with your camera. And when you had them in your camera, were you able to see exactly what it was or did you, were you able to really see better once you had them downloaded and printed out? I could see a lot of times I can see them. A lot of times I can kind of guess what they are, but when I can get them loaded on the computer and then look at them in a much bigger frame of reference, then we really can see, you know, what they really are. So, uh, and then here, as you see, um, I've blown them up uh, to a large size. And by the way, as anybody is interested on in the show, um, particularly if you get one of my books, uh, you see the cloud images there. If you want one, I can print one out for you, and either roll it up in a piece of paper, a big size, or put it on a poster board like this, um, and uh, can send it off to you. Obviously, it'll be a charge, but um, I can do that for any of the cloud photos you might see in our books, and there are hundreds of them. Yes, and they're absolutely beautiful, and which is the reason why we want people to go to your Facebook page because you upload a lot of the cloud photos on Facebook, whenangelstouch.com on Facebook, and then your website, whenangelstouch.com. And Tom, since we're talking about this, recently um, you're just now making to the public available your paintings, and these are high vibrational, uh, high frequency paintings paintings that the angels and the Godhead uh, channel through you that you put on canvas. And I know that um, Carter is going to be displaying some of the images as we go through the show today, but people can see some of the paintings that you're now making available to the public for sale. And I know that these paintings are an absolute, the, the frequency of those are for uh, empowerment and getting people on the right path, on their right path and healing and um, uh, empowerment and where is it that they can look at your website to take a look at some of those paintings that you're now making available to the public for sale yes um, just go to my website on the top you'll see a number of uh, items listed along the top border and one of them is called artwork just hit that and you'll see um, the paintings that um, I'm offering for a price and then below that, uh, you can scroll through a lot of the other paintings that I have done. I haven't, I haven't um, put them for sale yet. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and ab they're absolutely gorgeous. And like I said, they're very high frequency. They're um, embedded 
for healing to take place for each being that is wants to have these in their homes because that's the vibration and the frequency that was laid down as you so move out of the way and allow spirit to just fully um, come through. And so it's, 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 it's a wonderful gift that you're giving to humanity uh, along with all the other wonderful gifts that you're bringing. I just want to just add that I never wanted to paint. But, huh. um, in 2008, um, some energy came through my head down into my stomach and said, paint. I couldn't explain it other than I was possessed to paint immediately after that. And I, didn't know what I was doing, but I was starting to get messages and, and I could feel my hand move around where I didn't want it to go. So someone was pushing my hand. Um, and, and many times I get um, expressions in my head about, okay, it's got to be a gold color or a blue color and it's got to be a abstract of a certain thing. And, um, and I try to create it and uh, they're certainly helping me from upstairs. Let me say that. And um, many times when I take pictures of that painting, I can see angelic Im images inside. So there are, um, they're very interesting, I have to say. Something I never thought I'd be doing, but here it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just went with it. Yeah, and that's pretty much how your entire um, spiritual journey began when, when that angel came into your car and told you to slow down, when that original journey um, really began, as you've totally, everything has changed in your life, and that's what makes this story so miraculous. But um, Tom, let's start with uh, today, what, what, what is this whole spiritual journey? What is, what is our spiritual journey? What is our life really all about? What is, what is all of this about? Well, it's about, first of all, it's, it's about awakening, awakening to things like behind me, uh, seeing things. I started out uh, in about 2006 when I was out running, which I would run every day pretty much. I started seeing images and sidewalks, uh, certain humanoid figures and other things inside sidewalks, just like I see images in the clouds. Well, I didn't really see them before, um, and so it was really a... a you know, my, I was changing in a way I could see. And that's what I say, open your heart and you will see. It's about being at, as you say, a, a higher frequency. You know, we're all frequency, we're all vibration. Uh, I, you know, you link this to like a radio station. You turn the dial uh, or punch a different number in and it's a different frequency and you can get a different station. Well, it's the same principle here. We, uh, we are vibration, and the higher the vibration, the more, I would say, pure we are, the more angelic we are. So um, this journey started this way, and I, the more I got, the more I saw. The more I saw, the more I saw again. And, and so it led from sidewalks to clouds to, as you saw, you put up the book, our latest book, it's being able to uh, take pictures of light beings in a Catholic basilica in Italy. I mean, just amazing things have happened. And it wouldn't have happened if I was close to the idea. When the angel came into my car in 2001 and told me what to do, I didn't see it, but I heard its voice. If I had refused to take that guidance, I would be dead. I wouldn't be here 16, 17 years ago all that would have not happened. Mm -hmm. So I learned very quickly to take whatever opportunities come my way in terms of the guidance. And uh, uh, I get guidance in many, many different ways. It's grown leaps and bounds about the different ways I get communicated with. I would have never thought this would happen to me. I was not the kind of person that was into this at all. So... Now my life has changed, and my life, my wife Caroline's life has changed because of this. And we continue every day. We seem to get messages, a little message, a big message, and we expect them to come, and then we follow them. If we didn't follow them, I don't think we'd get them. How do you how do you get the messages? Like, tell me, like you know, you get the messages with the clouds, and you get different. So <clears throat> how how do you? How, what are all the different ways that you get? Them? <laughs> lots and lots of different ways. Uh, um, a lot of times I get a little buzzing in my left ear and, uh, that's kind of a signal is, yeah, that's right. Whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm looking at, that's right. They want me to know. 
um, uh, I get, um, even when I was out running one day, we had just gotten back from France and Paris uh, a few months earlier, and I'm, I'm, as I'm running, I can almost feel like my a message being typed in my forehead. And I, like I could read my forehead, which it said with an exclamation mark, go to Paris. We had just gone. So I ran, just home. Gone. <laughs> yeah, I ran home and told my wife, hey, we're going to Paris again. She said, I never thought you'd go again. Well, this is what they're saying. And it wasn't, it wasn't a little message. It was very emphatic. So I knew it was important. I knew it. And it led to us making a longer trip out of it and doing things that we didn't expect. And as we planned the trip, more messages would come in. And that's how it happens. And remarkably, we on that new trip, we were guided to go to a place called Le Puy en Velay. And um, it's about, I think, an hour and a half south of France by train. It's a town of about 20,000 people, and it has three small volcanoes in and around the town. One of the volcanoes, you can um, climb to the top, a thousand feet, straight up, and there's steps to do it. And lo and behold, on the top, there's a small church. It's, it's a St. Michael church. Mm. It's remarkable how in the world they built this church. And it was built around 1200 AD. So um, we were guided to go there and to experience it. And many other things as we went south of, in the south end of France, uh, many, many things would happen. So um, we, um, we are guided uh, in a great deal to go along the Archangel Michael Ley Line, which is, uh, if you look up L-E-Y line, you'll see what that means, that there are energy lines in the ground that ancient people knew about and built cathedrals and churches and other important buildings on them. And Archangel Michael is named after one, Mary's named after one, and so forth. So we have been following on many trips the Archangel Michael ley line because of the messages I got. And, and because of Archangel Michael is the one that originally came into your car, right? Yes, yes. Right. For some reason, he had how did to you know though? How did you know at that time, though, that it was Archangel Michael? How did you know that? I didn't. Uh, I knew it was a really important voice. Didn't know where it came from, even if it was an angel, until... Um, four years later, frankly, after talking to all kinds of spiritual people, psychics, no one could explain this until 2005, one night when we were both sleeping, my bed was raised up about a foot and dropped foot up and down, up and down for about 20 seconds. Three lights in our uh, room went on and off, including one that wasn't plugged in during that time. We were shook up. <laughs> no kidding. Who's in, our, who's in our house? Yeah. Um, and then, as I'm trying to sleep after a while, I close my eyes. And in the old fashioned TVs, when you turned it on, there was a bright light in the very center, and then it would expand out. Well, that's what happened in my very first vision that happened immediately after that incident. And in comes this angel figure in my vision, uh, perpendicular to my vision. And uh, Huge wings. Oh, I didn't know what to say other than that looked like an angel. And then the angel turned to be on a horse with a sword. And um, and then it was done. So I got really excited the next morning about I felt like I was being pushed to go to the, uh, the bookstore. So I ah. went that morning to the bookstore. I picked up randomly a book called Angels on the Side. I didn't know what it was pulled it out and pulled it out randomly somewhere in the middle, not exactly the middle. And there was an image, a hand drawing a sketch of an angel with a sword and a shield on a horse, Archangel Michael. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So that's how they communicated with me. He did to say, okay, now you can learn who I really am. Mm. And then in 2008 in Sedona, Arizona, my wife and I were walking a labyrinth. And the clouds started swirling up over us, and all of a sudden, this image happens in the clouds of a humanoid figure. And I quickly had my camera, took some pictures, 
it was Archangel Michael again on his horse with a sword. Didn't we? Didn't we submit this as one of the photos today on Facebook Live? Didn't? Isn't? Isn't? Don't we so. have that? Don't we have that yep. as an image for the for the for the readers and the listeners to see? Uh, on Facebook Live, and I just want to say, uh, when angels touch dot com, Facebook, when angels touch dot com, uh, Tom is where you were able, where you're able to hear more and see more about uh, Tom's journey. And um, Tom, let's tell the listeners where they can get their free gift that you're offering. Dates that we're gonna do, we're gonna do five free books. I think we said uh, for the first five people that contact you at. Yes, um, just contact me at tom at oneangelstouch.com and um, send me an email, send me your mailing address, and I will send um, a book out to you. So it's, uh, it's the first five. We're giving away the first five copies. And then for the other ones, for the other people that really want to be inspired by this book, and your life is going to change just by having its vibration, uh, The Magic of Finding Love and Peace with Tom and Caroline Labrazo. It's incredible, the images and the frequency of the book. And you can also get it on Tom's website. It's $25, including uh, postage and handling. And then also take a look at the paintings that now Tom is making available for sale. Sale. So back to Sedona, Arizona. Uh, Michael, you took uh, you took the you took the photo of Michael, and we we showed that to uh, Facebook Live today. So what happened after that? Well, um, I started seeing clouds all the time, taking thousands of pictures, and uh, and then I was pushed by Michael. He wouldn't let me sleep in the middle of the night, and he made me, even though I was working, get up. You need to write the first book, and the first mm -hmm. book turned to be out to be Journey to the Clouds, and then within several months later, another book, uh, Faces of the Universe, two books in about a year. Uh, lo and behold, I didn't know why it was happening so fast, but he knew that my parents were dying, um, and that came forth very quickly after the two books, and then therefore I had to stop everything, quit my job and took care of my parents. So I think Archangel Michael knew exactly the sequence of events that were going to happen and that if I didn't do those books then, I wouldn't do them. It'd be, mm -hmm. I'd be uh, busy with my parents. So um, uh, then in 2013, as our third book called Simply Angelic, like mostly uh, clouds with some cloud stories and so forth. And then this last September finished up the magic of finding love and peace. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, it's an incredible book. And so, Tom, um, you also you also get uh, you also get angelic guidance, sound through people, through all kinds of various messages. Um, yes. What, what are some of your other messages that you get? Um, well, I get them. I have three psychics that I've been dealing with for ten years that have been remarkable. Uh, whenever I see them, usually another message comes in, do this, go there, whatever. So it's with the help of another. Um, another big thing that's happened in the last few years is my dad died in 2011. And in 2013, he started coming through uh, a good friend of mine through a channel. Um, and whenever I was with her, um, he'd be talking to me like I'm talking to you today. It's remarkable that I can still talk to my dad like he's right next to me. In fact, he's still seen uh, in the house that he used to be living. He sits on the couch. People see him. He's in the yard working or looking around, um, walking the hallways of the house. And he's decided to stay. And then this is a little bit talking about the vibration issue again. Um, he's not in our world of third dimensions. Um, he is not in even the fourth dimension. Now, some say that we've got 12 or 13 dimensions um, that we can be over time, we can elevate to where the angels are, for example. And um, he is somewhere between the third and the fourth. And he has remarked to me that um, he can be seen because he's chosen not to lose his body. He said, if you go to the fourth dimension, you lose your body. So, and I said, well, why are you here? 
why are you still here? He says, well, I want to still be with you for a while, and I want to help you with your travels and your books. Isn't that neat? I mean, That is so neat. It's so yeah. neat that you're having communications. I mean, that gives so much hope to people, you know, that have loved ones on the other side that really, like you said earlier in the beginning, Tom, is that you just have to open your heart and you have to just be uh, willing to have the experience and start the communications. And that I think part of the reason why um, – everything is presenting itself the way that it does to you is because your willingness, your absolute willingness to be able to see it. And that's what you're helping us with. You're helping the listeners and everybody here with is being able to open, uh, open ourselves up to seeing the world through the eyes of an angel. And because we all are angels, we're all, we just have to remember that is like you said. So Tom, we really have, um, Five minutes left. We didn't take any of the other breaks, um, so we. Uh, I want to be able to cover one other thing about um, uh, reincarnation, reincarnation mm-hmm. and past lives. And I know we talked a, a lot about uh, that in in one of the other shows, but I want to talk about that. And then I also want to talk about the next time when you come back, which is next month, all the people that are listening now, when you're tuning in to the first Friday of of next month, call in on that day because we're going to make the phone number available uh, for you that day. And you can call Tom and you can ask him questions. We'll we'll open it up during the last segment. If you have any questions about angels or healing, or you want to share some of your experience, then, then give us a, give us a call uh, next month when we have Tom back. So now take us in, to a little bit of the uh, karma reincarnation. Um, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I think in the, to say, to be honest about it, um, I really, in the beginning, didn't know any of this stuff um, about karma. You know, I've heard it talked about, but um, I've come to understand it is really, really real. <laughs> it's and, real. Uh, yeah, it's real. And I think we might start with, um, you know, there's a place they say that uh, is called the Akashic Records. Mm-hmm. And um, each of us, each of our souls, um, have many, many lives, just like we have one t- uh, today. Um, and it's all recorded in your file, in your book, and in the Akashic Records. Well, it talks about um, all the reincarnations you might have had. And um, so... Um, I truly believe in reincarnation. I have felt reincarnated many times, um, and I've gotten more information over the years from different sources about some of my past lives. Some of them Uh, were in Italy, right? Yes, yes, yes. Italy, um, um, Eastern Europe, um, Egypt, uh, Australia. In fact, uh, tell you a quick story. Um, a friend of mine now, but at the time in 2009, a, nine, a person came up behind me at a book show where I was entered in and tapped me on the shoulder and he said, I came four and a half hours to see you. You were an aboriginal shaman 5,000 years ago. I said, wow. what? What? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and he said, you have to go back to Australia um, they're just he's channeling and said you have to go back to Australia it's very important well, I came to understand um, that on the journeys that we've been sent around the world a large part of it is to reclaim the energy remaining from that past life I might have had in that location we ended up going to Australia for that very fact and to go to see the outback and where the Ab- aborigines are concentrated and it was very important and um, so I'm essentially um, reintegrating those soul energies back into my overall soul Um, that seems to be the plan Um, you can do that I think in a number of ways but somehow we've been guided to actually travel to these locations yeah, well, and don't you think? Don't you think that, like you just said, you can do that a number of ways because uh, not everybody has the same path, not everybody has the same journey. This right. is this is part of yours, and, and this is what how it is that's unfolding for you. At the same time, you get to go visit beautiful places, and uh, it's almost a ceremonial, uh, sacred activism 
act of claiming fragmented parts of yourself back into wholeness. Yeah. yeah. Now I'll kind of tell a story of um, uh, about two years ago when I'm with uh, one of my healers, um, she was picking up images that were coming through of eight ancestors of mine, Italian, and I'm half Italian, half German, eight Italian um, ancestors of mine that are obviously passed, and my dad, and they're all in line with my dad in the front. Well, my dad's dead, so he's all with them. And I said, what are you guys doing here? And they said, uh, we need your help. And I said, what kind of help? So, well, we need you to release the karma on us. And they've been perhaps hundreds of years just waiting for someone to help them. Wow. And, um, and I said, well, how do I do that? And they said, you have to go to a place called Syracusa, Sicily. Uh, Syracusa is an ancient city in the Greek times uh, before Christ, B.C., and it was a powerhouse city. They had a million people there. Now there's only about 150,000, but it was as big or better than actually Athens. Um, so, you know, the Greeks actually uh, inhabited most of uh, southern Italy from like 500, 600 B.C. onward. So um, we took that guidance uh, very strongly and we went to Syracuse and um, we did some ceremony to relieve that karma for those. And um, when we got back, we were checking with our uh, psychics and healers. Did this was this successful? And they said yes. So we there are there are things that happened that I would never have thought. Okay, why am I why am I in charge of your karma? <laughs> why do I have to help you? Um, and so um, mm. um, these things happen if you're open to them. I find that most people have had some weird experiences, but they're hesitant to talk about them. They don't talk about them like I talk about them. Um, and I said, well, why don't you talk about it? And they said, well, we don't want to be called crazy. Mm -hmm. And I can understand that because people will call you crazy. I've lost friends over this because I've been truthful about what I think happened to me or things that are around me. And so um, I think if in fact, you open up and you're just honest with yourself about what you have seen or felt. Um, I think you're on the right track. And um, that's, I am completely open with anybody about all this stuff. Fortunately for me, we have a lot of photographs of some of these events. One of the um, past lives come, well, all my life I hated France. Okay, hey, Tom, you know what? But this hating France, that part we're going to take into the next show, okay? Because okay. we have right. to, we have to say a couple more things. Okay. But um, I um the one the one thing that I want to say is um just how uh, how much courage you have to talk about all of this and part of the living heaven on earth is really being in a non judgmental space to be able to share exactly what it is our experiences and that's really what it's about without judgment without um harshness without just uh, uh, being open and being willing. And so what is it that you want the people to remember? Give us the four R's. What is it that you want them to remember? <laughs> well, as my dad said, we have uh, one minute. Well, as my dad said, um, um, the angels upstairs need our help here on planet earth. And because there are conflicts happening in the upstairs as well as here, as you can see, wars and so forth. So he said to me, please tell everyone to visualize God's hands embracing all of the earth and visualizing that God's hands are protecting the earth. It's important. And so that message I want to leave with everybody. And again, open your heart and you will see. Thank you, Tom, so much for being here today. When angels touch .com, seeing the world through the eyes of an angel, Tom Lombrazo. Thank you for listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll see you next time. Namaste. Thank you. Yeah.